Alright folks, gather round because today I wish to talk to you about five random things that surprised me about Germany. If you're new here, I feel the need to make you aware that I moved to Germany in 2001. I'm originally from the East Coast in America. In the description of this video, there will be a link to other videos I make where I babble and rant about my opinions and life experience in my time here in Germany. And if you're a returning subscriber, please watch to the end. I have a special request for you. And, and with all of that said, let's get right in to these five random things that surprised this silly American living in Germany. Number one, standard of living. Now, with things like healthcare and decent education, uh, accessible to all here in Germany, I, as an American, noticed a really stark contrast in general society. Now, when I think about where I come from, when I would hop on the main highway in my town and start driving direction Philadelphia, you would see neighborhoods that were clearly falling apart, neglected, full of crime, drug dealers on corners, hookers, gunshots going off, tires missing from cars, bars on windows, windows without glass, lots of homeless. And you know, I don't see this here in Germany. And I say that as somebody that has worked and spent time in every corner of this country. And I also dare say, I know quite a few people. I have not seen or experienced the type of poverty that exists in America in my time here in Germany. In fact, quite the opposite. I have made friends with, for example, families that were not that well off, maybe working as a waitress and uh, having three kids. These people still were able to provide their kids with everything, a roof over their heads, food in their mouths, even take them on vacation. What I'm saying is there's a big difference in the standard of living and my own personal opinion is the type of poor that we have in America lives a completely different life here in Germany. I mean, Germany has people that are poor. They have people in need. But what they also have are quite a few government funded and well structured programs there to assist them. Many German cities are ranked among some of the best cities in the world. Mercer's 2017 Quality of Life Survey ranked Munich at 4 out of 231 cities, Dusseldorf at 6, Frankfurt at 7, and Berlin at my lucky number 13. But again, just based on my own personal experience, and I've been in all of those major cities, um, cities, towns, they're fairly clean here in Germany, especially to what I remember seeing in big cities in America. But honestly, the most shocking to me was the amount of resources uh, available to people in need, people that fell on hard times. Um, whether you lost your job, or even I think a better example, what if, what if your parents are alcoholics and you're born into that family and they don't work, or even junkies? I've met children in that situation here. Those children here, there are social programs available to support them. You really sense that the social safety net in this country is a really good thing. You know, it was really impressive to me and surprising as an American to know that here in Germany, if worst case scenario hits or you fall on hard times, meaning you lose your job or you get sick for a long period of time. You will not be immediately on a path to homelessness here and the debts will not immediately begin piling up. Um, they make it pretty clear that these social programs are there to assist you because the goal is that they assist you to help you get you back on your feet so that you also can once again pay into the system. And everybody benefits from this. 
when your streets are filled with people that are living a bit of a more dignified life, able to feed themselves, have a roof over their head and take care of their children, you find a little bit more of a comfortable atmosphere. But this is again where I need to stay. I, I've worked in every corner of this country and I have been out and about in all of the major cities at random weird hours where alcohol is involved and I never once feared for my life. I'm just saying, as an American, it really surprised me the standard of living in this country. Your average German lives a hell of a lot better and more more comfortable life than they do where I'm from. You know, factors that uh, affect that in addition to healthcare and education would also be things like, you know, having 20 some required vacation days. Like the Germans here, they've set up their society where they understand that the human body needs to take a rest now and then, and they've made laws to see that that happens because generally it keeps society a little bit more healthy and stable. Of course, healthcare for all keeps society a little more healthy and stable here. And yes, you do sense that on the streets. Now, everybody has an opinion on what ghetto is, I guess, and there are different levels. I mean, I can talk about how bad American ghettos are, but then, I mean, I could also tell you to look at ghettos in South America or Romania. So, opinions, different levels. I'm just saying, where I'm from, when somebody lives in the ghetto, things you're going to see, hear, and sense will include, but are not limited to, the following. Gunshots, busted windows, busted doors, crack heads, crack dealers, uh, things like this. The cops don't respond and Quite honestly, the poor people are living in not a good or sanitary situation. I really wish my home country would fix that. Like, what I'm saying is when you're in America, there are <sighs> sections that a lot of us know you don't go to because you might get shot. Haven't experienced that yet in Germany. Now, before... Some of you out there start thinking that I'm some kind of cheerleader for Germany and everything is perfect here. Slow down. All I'm doing is making some comparisons, observations on where I'm from and where I'm living. If you are watching this video because standard of living interests you or, or maybe you're looking to move to somewhere where you can have a better standard of living, based on a lot of the travels that I've done, I would highly recommend looking at Scandinavia. Look into Sweden. I think they have one of the best standards of living in the world. Fun facts. Number two. The nerd is king. I need to make it clear. I say nerd in the most loving of ways. Now, anybody that's watched a lot of American films um, that sort of go around the high school scene there. Well, be aware that in our schools, um, there's a little bit of a dynamic. Those things about the jocks and the cheerleaders and the nerds, while well, they are overemphasized and made comical for cinema purposes, there are some truths to the stereotypes you see in some of those films. Just for an example, Growing up in an American school, and when I think about especially elementary school, the kid that gets targeted as the nerd gets picked on, even beat up, homework stolen, made fun of, he becomes a target. And as somebody who moved to Germany with her child in tow, he was seven when we moved here, and I put him right into the German schools. I was really surprised on the dynamic amongst the kids in relation to school here. Between what I saw with my own child and um, from my time working with uh, teenage boys here in Germany, 
it's I just I get the impression that the average German child takes school more seriously than your average American child. Like, I'll never forget the time my mind was blown when a, I think he's about 15, 16 year old customer of mine, entered my shop, clearly looking sad and despondent. And when I asked him what was wrong, he sat down and put his hand on his head and said to me, Armstrong, I couldn't do physics today in school. Physics was canceled. And I was like, physics? I didn't even make it past pre algen I hate math. Like, I hate it. And I'll never forget the day that I went to pick my son up from school. And as I approached the schoolyard, I uh, had sensed that the little girl over there seemed kind of sad, and the little boys over here that my son knew seemed to be, I don't know, kind of smug. And uh, I got a little concerned. I didn't speak very good German at this point, so I couldn't, upon approaching the situation, clearly know what was going on. So I asked my son, what's going on here? Are they picking on her? And maybe because of where I'm from, I might have had slight assumptions that these little German boys were picking on this girl because she was a person of color. And so my mom and anti-racism radar is just blinking like crazy. And my son is like, no, mom, no. Mary over there never studies for tests and doesn't do her homework. So I said, what now? And my son was like, yeah, we had a test today and she got a five. That's like an F in American schools because she never studies and never does her homework. And my friends are just telling her that. Maybe if you did your homework, maybe if you studied, you'd get better grades. And again, I just kind of was like, really? It seemed really clear to me right away through my child and then as I stated later through other jobs I had working with German kids that yeah the average German child seems to take school more seriously. I can't help to wonder if some of these differences are just a result of for example like when I think of myself, I knew I wasn't going to be able to go to college or get any kind of degree that was just not in the works. And it feels like here in Germany, that's just common sense. I will go to school. Doesn't mean everybody's going to become a doctor or a lawyer here, but it's common sense to them that this is what you do. You go to school, you learn a job, you get on a path to a career, and they're just going to do it because they can so this is just normal what they do i sound like a babbling stupid american i'm just saying i was horrible at school i was not good i didn't do homework i didn't study if i had gone to german school i would have been really picked on over here maybe at some level maybe at some level i didn't take it that seriously because it wasn't to be taken that seriously. I knew that at 18 I was going to be in some menial job down the road. So yeah, that's just my humble opinion. It feels like to me the average German is better educated than the average American. And it really impressed me that um, a good education is accessible to all here and it really surprised me that in those stereotypical dynamics and such I would say the nerd is king here and I think that's a good thing. Number three, smoking culture. Smokers are everywhere here. Not everybody smokes here but I guarantee you that almost everywhere that you go here you will find a smoker and and or there will be one in front of the building you are visiting smoking. 
most likely more than one. I could be wrong on my years here, but I think it was like around 2006, 2007, all of the Raucherverbot laws started going into effect where they changed it that you cannot smoke where people are working. I should probably look it up online. I think the laws are trying to get a little stronger now in regards to like smoking in your car and such here. But when I first moved here in 2001, I'll never forget the first time that I went to a government office to do, I believe it was some of my paperwork to live here legally, and that person had an ashtray on their desk. To me as an American, I was like, what is this, the 70s? They can smoke in their offices here? And since they adjusted the laws for society's safety, um, most bars and restaurants have created outdoor areas. And I'm telling you, if you're a smoker and you go to those outdoor areas that have a smoke, you're going to make a friend. One social faux pas that I am guilty of is the following. You see, it's been my experience that when your average German smoker goes to have a cigarette, this is how they do it. Like, nine times out of ten, when someone who smokes goes to have a cigarette, they will then immediately offer it to you, smoker or not. This happened to me so many times that it made me start looking at myself and being a little ashamed. These things are expensive. I mean, the taxes keep getting higher on them, as they should. That should go back to taking care of the people. I paid seven euros for this pack. They're, they're expensive. I try not to smoke a lot. And yeah, I, and yeah, I realize after some time that I'm the dick that when I go out for a cigarette, I just grab a cigarette and I smoke it. And I try to make myself remember, don't be rude. In this culture, they share the smokes. Now, don't get me wrong. I... I know, I mean, I think everybody knows that smoking is not healthy. But I'm just saying, coming from a land where, for example, it's not just go outside of the building and smoke, like some pieces have it that you have to be X amount of feet away from the building outside in this air until you can light up a cigarette. I want to make it clear, I have no problem going over there when I smoke a cigarette. And I have literally worked for Americans who, for example, came out to talk to me outside. I'm in a parking lot. I'm maybe counting t-shirts out of a box and I'm smoking a cigarette because I'm working. I didn't take breaks. This American that needed to come up and communicate with me had to approach me like this because I was smoking a filthy cigarette. Just saying Americans are like more sensitive and outspoken against smokers. Filthy smokers. Bad smokers. And quite honestly, I have had those personal experiences both in America and traveling Europe working for Americans where I felt like a filthy smoker. And I'm just saying, the Germans didn't do that to me. All that said, don't smoke, kids. It's horrible. It's expensive. It's stinky. It's not worth it. Don't do it. Number four, healthy, fresh, and local food. So yeah, something that surprised me and I also really value here in Germany is how accessible local fresh and generally healthy food is to the common man. I love here that it seems um, most if not all towns, villages, cities, they have like at least once a week in the center of the town a uh, f farmer's market and what you can find there is anything from dairy products, meats and vegetables, even breads that are all made, grown, produced, and cared for by local farmers. Now don't get me wrong, we, we have this in America, we have some farmer markets, especially if you go out into the more rural and small towns, but they're dying. The farmers, your average little 
farmer in America is dying off, being replaced by like factory farms. And you see, I think your average American, like a, a lot of us, uh, have to like get in our car and drive like a half hour to get to the supermarket, and um, we end up buying a lot of uh, quick and uh, already pre-made foods, un generally unhealthy stuff, and a, a lot of that is because a lot of us uh, work maybe like two jobs and have busy lives. Um, but it's getting harder and harder, I think, in America to find fruits and vegetables and meats and eggs and such that were actually made by farmers from your town. I think that's sad. And what I remember being a single mother in America and going to the supermarket is I remember it being expensive and difficult to get fresh and healthy foods. Whereas here, I can buy most of that stuff from somebody who made it locally for a really affordable price. Even some of the chain supermarkets here in Germany, when you're in their produce section, will have signs where they boast that they sell regional produce. I like that, and I think it's cool. Really surprised me, mostly how accessible and how affordable those things were. Number five, sport. I will never forget when I was in the Volkshochschule learning to speak German and looking through the textbooks we were using at the very first basic phrases we had to learn, the basic sentences. Those included the things you think, like my name is, where I'm from, but one thing also that was in there that just seemed weird to me was, um, machst du Sport? Or, was für Sport machst du? Basically, they were telling me that it was a very common question they for an main counter, in addition with what's your name and where you're from. It's very common that you could be asked what sport or exercises or sports you participate in. At the time, I remember thinking to myself, yeah, right, this is as common as, like, what do you do for work and where are you from? But it only took me a few years to realize that, yeah, these Germans are quite sporty. Your average German, it's not abnormal for them to have a gym membership or at the very least go often bike riding or uh, play soccer with their buddies, um, be physically outdoors and move themselves. It also surprised me how many Germans here join clubs. I'm saying they're big club joiners. Soccer clubs, tennis clubs, bowling clubs, shooting clubs. And you know, I mean, where I'm from, I mean, some of us have like gym memberships or own a bike, but it's not like here. Like here, the school taught me that that is really true. It's, it's very normal uh, for your average person here to be physically active, even a member of some sport club. Now, I'm not a big fan of sports, but I, uh, I am pretty physically active when my health issues allow. Um, and I really, really, really appreciate the ability to be physically active here. The amount of, for example, bike paths and nice parks with paths and also seats where you can take breaks when you get dizzy. I spent a lot of time riding bike in Germany and I, uh, really do enjoy that it seems to be more possible to travel further here in Germany on bike safely than it does like where I'm from. And in light of physical activity being so common here and also something that doctors will push on you, as opposed to drugs like where I'm from, in light of that, um, again, I would just say I see it in society. Don't get me wrong, we have unhealthy people, people that don't do any physical activity, aren't interested in having a good diet, to each his own. But generally, I feel like I don't see, how do I put this nicely? I don't see the type of like monstrosity obesity one sees 
where I'm from. So, yeah, sport. Yeah, I feel like we covered everything there, at least for today. So that was five random things that surprised me, silly American in Germany, and I appreciate you all watching. If you happen to be one of my subscribers and you're still watching, first off, thank you and I really love you. I'd like to ask you kind folks to please leave me a comment down there letting me know what you're curious about, what you want to know about. I mean, there's a reason you subscribe to me, and I'm working on like lists of various things I plan to babble and rant about, but my 20-some years working in sales tells me that the customer is often quite right, and I want to give them what they want. So if you would be so kind as to let me know what you're curious about, a question that you may have for me, you just might see a video made about it next. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, take care of yourself.